Kwam Yasharala. Shalom, Israel. <laughs> Hope y'all having a blessed day today. Man, I got a good one for you today. <laughs> well, yeah. We gonna tackle this thing. You know, we know like the media and this in this uh country like to tackle it their way, but we gonna tackle it by what the most high says, what we ought to do. Uh, we're going to tackle it by what the Most High says that we ought to do. We're going to cover, uh, we're going to go over on why we shouldn't be pledging our allegiance to to the flag or or to any other bang thing. And why we shouldn't be uh, voting either. Huh? We're talking to the Israelites. We're talking about all other nations. Okay? We ain't talking about the Gentiles. We're talking about the Israelites. Okay? So this word is for the Israelites, the true Hebrew Israelites. Uh, that you, uh, that's who this message is for. Okay? This ain't for the Gentiles. Okay? This ain't for every other nation. So all the rest of you people from other nations and Gentiles who ain't got nothing to do with us Hebrew Israelites, then this word ain't for you. Neither was this Bible for you either. The Bible wasn't for y'all. Huh? He gave his word unto Jacob. Huh? He ain't deal with any other nation. He gave his word unto Israel, unto Jacob. This was, this is who the word is for. Okay. So for the Hebrew Israelites out there, this is why we shouldn't be voting. And this is why we shouldn't be setting up strangers above us. This is why we shouldn't be uh, pledging allegiance to, to no flags. Or swearing no false uh, allegiance and oaths to to the Lamb and all this other stuff that out here going on within these churches out here. These buildings is what I call them. They ain't the church. We are the church. And these buildings of, uh, of uh, these synagogue buildings in, uh, in the land of our captivity. Huh? So this, we're going to go over that. Because most high going to hold you accountable to these oaths. Huh? <laughs> That you up there swearing falsely by. Holding your hand over your chest and all that stuff for what? Most I ain't tell you to do none of that. He told you not to do it at all. Huh? So what you gonna believe? You gonna believe man? Huh? Or you gonna believe the most high? Hmm? Let me sip my tea on this one. Ah, all right. Let's get into it. So if you got your Bible, your basic instruction before leaving earth, okay, I got my Sifa, uh, divine book. Let's go ahead and read. Let's start in the book of Deuteronomy, okay? Book of Deuteronomy, chapter, uh, let's see here. Chapter 17. So go with me to uh, Deuteronomy chapter 17. We're going to start there. And this is going to cover why we shouldn't be voting for these people uh, in these elections. Why we shouldn't be voting for these people to set up these strangers above the Israelites. Even in the land of our captivity. Huh? So let's start at uh, 17. And at verse... Eight. No matter of fact, I'll read the whole thing, verse one, because this whole thing needs to be read by those that we do set above us, that are of our Israelite brethren. Uh, so Deuteronomy chapter seventeen, verse one, says, "You shall not sacrifice unto Yah, your Elohim, any bullock or sheep." Wherein is blemish or any evil favoredness. Okay. And we know that Yeshua the Hamashiach was the ultimate sacrifice. He was the lamb slain before the foundation of the earth. Hallelujah. So we shouldn't still be sacrificing other lambs <laughs> and all this other stuff going on. Or we taking we making the sacrifice of the most high son of none effect. Uh-huh. Is you going to trust in the lamb of your slaughter 
or the lamb that was slaughtered before the foundation of the world. Huh? So I know, a lot, I know a lot of Hebrew brothers still out there sacrificing lambs and goats. Huh? Let's use common sense now. Yahushua HaMashiach was that lamb. Okay? We shouldn't still be sacrificing lambs and goats. Okay? Common sense now. Huh? Because your lamb and goat that you get nowadays are what? All tainted anyway. The devil has put his hand in all the food. Hmm? <laughs> okay. There's a reason why them, them so-called uh, them imposters over there in Israel are trying to do what? Raise red heifers. Huh? They trying to raise red heifers so they can uh, slaughter lambs in the temple because they don't accept Yeshua HaMashiach as the lamb that was slain for the foundation of the earth. So you want to be partakers in sins with them? You want to be partakers in, in plagues with them? You better cut all that out. <laughs> cut that mess out. Huh? Because you do that for your own self-righteousness. <laughs> Yeshua was righteousness, was righteous enough. Ain't no more lambs being slain. Well, let's read on. Because I'm reading this whole thing. That's why. We got to read this whole thing that we get understanding. Uh, on why we shouldn't be voting and setting up people above us. Uh, and I'm going to say it one more time. Shalom, shalom, brother. I'm going to say it one more time. This word was, was meant for Israel. Uh, the Most High showed his word unto Jacob, Israel, and not to every other nation. He ain't dealt so with any other nation. So this word I'm reading, it ain't for every nation. Uh, this ain't for every Gentile. This word, I'm sp particularly talking to the Hebrew Israelites and why we shouldn't be voting and pledging allegiance to no flag. Huh? So let's get in it, okay? So we're in Deuteronomy chapter 17, verse 1, okay? And we're starting here because this whole thing needs to be read by whoever we said above us in the land of our forefathers. Huh? So let's read on. It says, for that it is an abomination unto Yah, your Elohim. So once again, we, you know, Yahushua the Mashiach uh, was the lamb slain before the foundation of the earth. So we still shouldn't be sacrificing lambs <laughs> and goats for no sin offerings and, and peace offerings. Okay? Because the Most High Son was that offering. It says, if there be any among you within any of your gates, which Yah, your Elohim, gives you, man or woman, that has worked wickedness in the sight of Yah, your Elohim, in transgressing his covenant, who huh? transgresses the law, and has gone and served other gods, huh? other gods that man has made up, whether they made it out of wood, stone, or silver, or gold, uh, or gave name or reverence to, huh? like we see going on today in these so-called synagogues. Okay. And worship them, either the sun or the moon. So whether they be sun gods or moon gods. Huh? Which we know that the Catholics work, worship the sun gods of Christios, who they call Christ or Krishna. Huh? And the Muslims worship the moon god, huh? the prophet Muhammad, and Islam, okay? And any, and, uh, and even some of the Egyptian gods, huh? from Egyptology. Huh? It says, or any of the host of heaven, which I have not commanded, huh? which I have not commanded you to worship. So even if you make graven images of, of a little baby Gabriel and and uh and of uh what's his name um uh, Gabriel and uh what's the other guy named Michael and uh, Raphael and all these other angels and you making graven images of them and worship them as gods which the Most High told you not to do like he told everyone that they appeared to and told them uh, and they told uh, the people not to bow down to them. <laughs> For I'm your brother. Hmm? This is what he's talking about. Because we running them up with this thing. It's pissing the most high off. Okay. 
It says, verse 4 it says, and it be told to you, and you heard of you have heard of it, and inquired diligently, and behold, it be true. And the thing certain that such abomination is worked in Israel. Then shall ye bring forth that man or that woman which have committed that wicked thing unto your gates, even that man or that woman, and shall stone them with stones till they die. Huh? Now, we know we, you know, we, for, for one part, we're in the land of our captivity. We can't, what? We can't go around stoning people who transgressed the law. Huh? We're in the land of our captivity. Okay? So we can't do that. This Old Testament. Okay? We can't do that part. However, we're going to get to the second part of what we can do. All right. <laughs> it says, at the mouth of the two witnesses or three witnesses, shall he that is worthy of death be put to death. But at the mouth of one, one witness, he shall not be put to death. The hands of the witnesses shall be first upon him to put him to death. And afterward, the hands of all the people. So you shall put the evil away from among you. Okay. So like I said, we're in the land of our captivity. Okay. We're not back in our own land. So these things we cannot do. Huh? But however, we can do what? Put the evil away from among us. Just like, you know, the most, uh, your, your Husha with the Mashiach was the lamb slain for the foundation of earth, from the earth. So we still shouldn't be sacrificing lambs and goats either. There's some things we still shouldn't be doing because they already been completed for us. They already been done. <laughs> you understand? But it says 8, verse 8. Deuteronomy chapter 17, verse 8. It says, if, it, if there arises a matter too hard for you, for a uh, too hard for you in judgment. Okay. So like stuff like that, it'd be too hard for us to judge and cast stones, right? Especially in the land of our captivity. We can't go around doing that kind of stuff. You know? What we need to do then? It says between blood and blood, between plea and plea, between stroke and stroke, being matters of controversy within your gates. Okay. So these matters of controversies within our gates, what we got to do? Then shall you arise and get you up into the place which Yah, your Elohim, shall choose. And you shall come unto the priests, the Levites, and unto the judge that shall be in those days and inquire. Huh? So now we got another issue. For <laughs> We don't know where the Levites is, who the Levites among us is. huh? So what we got to do now? And unto the judge that shall be in those days. So in the land of our captivity, and especially in America, we have judges. Huh? So if it's a matter that's between us, and we got to do what? Bring before these judges. Okay. And then we ain't talking about evil judges either. <laughs> talking about those that are righteous that uphold the law, statute, and commandments. And inquire. And they shall show you the sentence of judgment. Okay. They shall show you the sentence of judgment. See, these judges who sit on these benches, they supposed to be righteous. Huh? These are supposed to be righteous judges. Okay? Even like unto the Levites. Huh? Even unto the priests. Okay? But and here in this country, we have corrupt judges and corrupt systems. Okay? That's why we should be handling our own affairs between ourselves. <laughs> And the elders. It says, And you shall do according to the sentence which they of that place which Yah shall choose shall show you. And you shall observe to do according to all that they inform you. Uh -huh. According to the sentence of the law of the Torah, which they shall teach you. See, these judges don't teach you the law, they don't teach you the Torah. Huh? As we say, we don't we're not dealing with righteous judges. We're dealing with evil judges. Because they're supposed to teach you the Torah. Huh? It says, and, and, uh, and it says, 
and you should do the sentence which they shall teach you, and according to the judgments which they shall tell you, you shall do. You shall not decline from the sentence which they shall show you, okay, to the right hand nor to the left. And the man that will do presumptuously and will not hearken unto the priest that stands to minister there before Yah, your Elohim, or unto the judge, even that man shall die, and you shall put away the evil from Israel. Okay, so two things. We're not dealing with Levites in the land of our captivity. Number two, we're not dealing with righteous judges. So what's, what's the last thing we got to do? We got to put away this evil from amongst us. Huh? It says, and all, the, and all the people shall hear and fear and do no more presumptuously. Huh? So once we know, once we have the law, which we all have, everyone got a copy of the law in their house somewhere, okay? And we know that it transgresses against the law of the Most High. And we know not that we have Levites in our presence or righteous judges above us. Then we got to do what? Put away that evil from amongst us. We got to reprove, rebuke, and exhort our brethren and sisters. Like I say, this is for the Hebrew Israelites, not all nations. Okay? For the Gentiles don't follow the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High. Neither did he show them the law, statutes, and commandments. Verse 14, this is the more important part. It says, when you are come into the, unto the land which, you, uh, which Yahuwah, your Elohim, gives you, and shall possess it, and shall dwell therein, and, and, and shall say, I will set a king over me, or a president. Huh? We don't have more kings these days. We have presidents, right? It says, like all the other, it says, like as all the nations that are about me, you shall in any wise set him king over you, whom Yah, your Elohim, shall choose. Huh? Not that we shall choose, but the Most High shall choose. Huh? That's why we shouldn't be voting for our enemies. Huh? But when I'm one, y'all got to choose that man. Huh? He got to be a, 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 a God-fearing man. Huh? He got to fear y'all. These people don't fear y'all. Huh? It says who y'all, your Elohim, shall choose, one from among your brethren. Huh? That's the key word. And who is the brethren? The Israelites, huh? Because he's talking to the Israelites. He ain't talking to every other nation, huh? And which Yah shall choose from among your brethren to be king or president over you. And what? Unto the land which Yah gives you, huh? But we know we're not in the land that Yah gives us, huh? So therefore, we can't say to Yah, set a king over us in the land of our captivity, now can we? <laughs> huh? So we shouldn't be praying for y'all send us a president. Huh? We in the land of our captivity, y'all. This passage is talking about when we in the land of uh that Yah gives us, the land flowing milk and honey, the land of our forefathers, and we shall say that we need a king over us. That Yah shall choose that king. Huh? <laughs> Y'all shall choose them. But we ain't in the land of our uh, forefathers right now. We were in the captivity. Huh? So we showed no shouldn't be setting no kings over us. Why? Here we go. Because it says, it says, one from among your brethren shall you set king over you or president over you. You may not. Huh? You may not. Okay. You may not set a stranger over you. Uh huh? <laughs> uh, does the most high say if you want a king and you're in the land that I give unto you of your forefathers, and you want a king or so called president over you, then Yah, your Elohim, shall choose one from amongst your brethren. Uh huh? That means Yah himself, the most high himself, shall choose this president of the king to set above the children of Israel. Uh huh? But we in the land of our captivity. So, huh? 
and we oppressed in the land of our oppressors, we shouldn't be crying out to the Most High to set a king over us. That's why we shouldn't be voting. Because huh? why when we voting, we doing what? We going against what the Most High just said. You may not set a stranger over you. <laughs> Who are the strangers? The heathens, the Gentiles, huh? which is not your brother. Huh? If they're not an Israelite, they're called what? Gentiles, heathens, strangers, huh? the other people. Huh? We shouldn't be setting them above us. So why are we still voting again? Huh? Please tell me that when that goes against the most high. <laughs> it says, nor cause the people to return to Egypt. Huh? Now why would they want to turn to Egypt? And what he call Egypt? Bondage. Huh? Every time he say uh, that I'm going to bring you into Egypt again with ships, mean I'm going to bring you into bondage again with ships. Nor cause the people to return to bondage. Huh? To Egypt, to bondage. To the end that he should multiply horses for as much Yah has said. Excuse me. Unto you, ye shall henceforth return no more that way. <laughs> huh? Remember he said when he brought them out the land of Egypt that they should no more return unto Egypt again. Huh? We shall no more return unto bondage. So every time we set in strangers and the, those of the Gentiles above us as kings and presidents in the land of our oppressors, we are putting bondage upon us. Huh? We not you're not gonna get nothing from these people that's running for president. Huh? The most high said you you may not set a stranger over you, which is not your brother, which is not an Israelite. Huh? We should not be setting these presidents above us, brothers and sisters, and cause our people to return into bondage, to return to Egypt. Huh? Man. It's right there in your book. That's why we shouldn't be voting. <laughs> and you see how this country counts on the blacks' vote. Huh? They count on it. Huh? Because they know we just gullible little sheep led to the slaughter to go up there and just ignorant to go vote for our oppressors. <laughs> Y'all better wake up. Verse 17. Neither shall he multiply women to himself. That has, that his heart turned not away. Talking about this king that the Most High said of us. Because if we're going to choose a king in the land that the Most High gives us, the land of our forefathers to possess, the Most High going to set the king over us. And we already have a king over us. Huh? You don't know we already have a king? We already have a king over us. Yeshua the Hamashiach, Lord of Lord, kings of kings. Huh? We sitting there. He already put him over us. <laughs> it says, Neither shall he greatly multiply himself silver and gold. Huh? And it shall be when he sits upon the throne of his kingdom that he shall write him a copy of this law. Huh? That he shall write a copy of this Torah in a sefer or book out of what? Out of that uh, which is before the priests, the Levites. Huh? So he, in other words, he shall have a copy of the law. He shall, he shall have a copy of the law before him. It says, and it shall be with him, and he shall read therein all the days of his life. Man. Huh? That he may learn to fear Yah, his Elohim. Hallelujah. To keep all the words of this law, this Torah, and these statutes, and do them. So even he got to keep the law, statutes, and commandments. <laughs> we setting up these strangers of our oppressors above us who do not keep the copy of this law, nor keep the law, statutes, and commandments. And you causing the people of Israel, the children of Israel, to return unto bondage. Unto slavery by setting oppressors over us. Please stop voting, people. Come on now. 
This ain't what we supposed to be doing over here. Y'all, we didn't got comfortable in the land of our oppressors thinking this is our land. No, this ain't our land. <laughs> Israel is our land. Jerusalem is our land. And it will return unto us soon and very soon. And it says, verse 20 says, that his heart be not lifted above his brethren. That's why he got to read and keep the law. So he won't think that he above his brethren sitting as king on the throne or 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 uh or as a uh, president on the throne that his heart may not be lifted above his brethren or the children of Israel okay it says and that he would and that he turned not aside from the commandments <laughs> huh to the right hand or to the left to the end that he may prolong, prolong his days and his kingdom he and his children in the midst of Israel. Huh? So we ain't in the midst of Israel right now. We're in the land of our captivity. So we shouldn't be voting at all. For no strangers above us. <laughs> hmm? Now I know the Democratic Party. They hate to hear that. Because why? Because they count on our votes. They count for us ignorant black people to go down and vote for our oppressors. Huh? And ain't nothing changed has it? Huh? All these years of voting ain't nothing changed right? Huh? They still kill us day all the day long, call themselves not guilty. The system is still rigged against us. They still poison our food and our air. Huh? They still killing our people off. There ain't nothing changed. Black people still struggling in the hood and the ghettos. Huh? Only jobs they can get is from the foreigners that they bring in with A1 visas. Huh? The Syrians they bust over here on planes and trains could get jobs and mortgages and houses quicker than we can, huh? And the jobs you go get, we got to go work at their establishments, huh? And here we think we free. <laughs> and here we think it is we in the land of, of milk and honey over here, huh? Oh, shoot. Better stop, uh, start, better stop voting for these oppressors. And Trump already told you what he about, huh? Now, they can sit there and cry and complain, dismiss all this David Duke stuff if you want to. Uh -huh. But if it looked like a duck, it's probably a duck, right? <laughs> Come on, man. Stop voting for your oppressors. Stop voting for these people. That's how you change the system. The system ain't going to change by us voting. The system will change and work for us when we stop voting. Because huh? then they say, well, hold up. These Negroes will stop voting now. Oh, maybe we need to go appease to them Negroes. Oh, maybe we need to go, maybe we think about getting them some real jobs and get them out the hood so they can vote for us. Then that's when you're going to see change. Until then, hey, they don't care nothing about you. They expect you to wait in them long lines wrapped around the building, 70, 80, 90 years old with a cane. Yes, I got my vote. I got the, yes, I got the right to vote. I'm going to go vote. What? Most High ain't told you to do none of that. He told us not to put strangers above you. <laughs> That's why people don't read their word. They don't read their word. Go with me to Matthew. Now we're going to get on why we shouldn't be pledging allegiance to no flag. Huh? Why we shouldn't be pledging allegiance to the lamb. Like I hear in some of these Christian schools. Like they got my daughter in. Huh? Because I got my daughter in Christian school to blend in, huh? But they want her to pledge allegiance to the Lamb. That ain't in the Bible. Huh? Pledge and stand to pledge allegiance to the flag. For what? Huh? We ain't supposed to be swearing no oaths and pledges. We look up the definition of pledge. Pledge means what? Oath. Or vow. Huh? We're not supposed to be making vows. Huh? Not supposed to be making covenant with our enemies either. <laughs> Huh? Ain't got nothing to do with them people who died in Iraq, Afghanistan. Don't forget, I served this country too. Huh? Ain't got nothing to do with patriotism. That flag. Nothing at all. That flag represents a corporation. Huh? And just like all corporations, they bring in goods huh? and they export goods. They import and they export. Huh? It's a symbol of a corporation. Just like the flag of China. It's a symbol of a corporation. They export goods. They bring in goods. That has nothing to do with their army. 
Mm. That, that American flag is just as guilty as much murder upon the black community as the uh as that uh that that uh what you call it that rebel flag, that southern flag, huh? It is what it is in history, whether you like it or not. But we shouldn't be pledging allegiance to none of that, cause that go against the Most High, and we gonna break that down, huh? The Most High gonna count what you count to all these oaths and pledges you pledge, huh? You shouldn't be pledging these pledges and oaths. Go with me to Book of Matthew. Book of Matthew, chapter five. Okay. First, let's get who he's talking about. He's talking to what? His disciples and the children of Israel. And who's talking? Yeshua. Let's start at verse 1. It says, And seeing the multitudes, he went up into the mountain, and he was, and when he was set, his disciples came unto him, which were Israelites. Huh? And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in the spirit, or the poverty, poor in poverty. Okay? Blessed are the poor in the spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are, are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they that do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. And blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see Yah. Blessed are the peacemakers. For they shall be the called the children of Yah. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake. For theirs is the kingdom of Yah. The kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you. And shall say all manner of evil against you falsely. For my sake. Shalom, bro. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad. For great is your reward in heaven. For so, for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. And we're going to get on that too. Who are they that persecuted the prophets? But before we get into that, let's get on why we shouldn't be swearing oaths. Uh, pleasures. And a pledge by definition is an oath or a vow. Uh, a pledge by definition is an oath or a vow. Look it up yourself. Okay. So when you pledge in the legions, you put your heart over your chest, and you stand there and pledge your legions to a flag, it is vanity that you pledge unto. It's a vain thing. It means nothing. It's a piece of cloth. Hmm? We're going to get into that. Go with me in the same chapter down to verse 33. Matthew, book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 33. It says, and again... <laughs> You have heard that it has been said by the old time, uh, by them of old time, you shall not forswear yourself, but shall perform unto Yah your oaths. But I say unto you, swear not at all, or swear not falsely, neither by heaven, for it is Yah's throne, neither by the earth, for it is his footstool. Neither by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Neither shall you swear by your head. Now you swear by your own head, huh? Why? Because you cannot make one hair white or black. But let your communication be yea, yea, nay, nay. For whatsoever is more than these, huh, comes of evil. <laughs> huh? Did you understand what he just said? Uh, so when you swear to that flag, that is a piece of cloth, which is no more than what's your hairs on your very head, the most high knows the number of the hairs on your very head, is worth more than that piece of cloth. You every, everything you swear by it is what? Evil. <laughs> it is evil thing. It is evil. Whatsoever is more than these comes of evil. Huh? So we shouldn't be swearing by no flag, swearing by no lamb, uh, swearing by no Christian flag. Uh, and I congratulate my daughter for standing up on that. Like I said, she go to this Christian school, so-called Christian school. 
But I teach her the truth. I don't let them teach them jack crap in there. Because they don't know the truth. They don't know Yah. They don't keep the law, statutes, and commandments. Huh? She's only there to blend in. Hmm? Until most high come. Huh? But she know right from wrong. She know the truth. She knows she ain't supposed to be swearing no oath, mind no flag. And no can anybody make you swear. Why? Because that goes against the Bill of Rights. Hmm? That goes against the First Amendment. <laughs> Uh, the Bill of Rights. Uh, the Bill of Rights. Remember this? First Amendment says Congress shall, not, shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion. Shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. Huh? Or abridging the freedom of speech, huh? or of the press, or the right of the people peaceably to assemble and do what? And to petition the government huh? for a redress of grievances. So if my child don't want to stand and salute that flag because she doing a what? Peaceful protest, huh? a silent protest. Against what? Two things. Against those who uh, who swear falsely an oath, which the Most High told us not to, and the other to redress the grievances of this government, to the, which the flag is supposed to be for justice for all, and liberty and freedom for all, that she has a right to do so under the First Amendment. Huh? Under the First Amendment, she has a right to do that. She has a right to exercise her faith. Okay, Congress or no one else or no other church or establishment of the religion shall prohibit the free exercise of your faith huh? or abridge the freedom of speech. So if she want to stand there and be silent, while the rest of y'all crazy people sit there and swear oaths, well, she can do that. Huh? According to the Bill of Rights. But hey, even this is better. Because we don't go by that. We go by the laws of the most high. The law, statute, commandments of the most high. We don't need that piece of paper to tell us that we, hey, I ain't got to swear no oath. We go by the word. Hallelujah. We go by the word. Go with me to, uh, Go to uh, Book of James. Go with me to Book of James. Go to Book of James. Uh, Book of James, chapter 5. Okay? Book of James, chapter 5. This is in the New Testament. For all you New Testament people who's, who think the law is done away with and, and everything in the Old Testament is null and void. Well, let's go with the New Testament. Let's see what the most high says in the New Testament about swearing oaths. <laughs> huh? Book of James, chapter 5, verse 11. And we're going to start here. It says, Behold, we count them happy which endure. Ye have heard of the patience of Job, and have seen the end of Yah. That Yah is very pitiful and of tender mercy. But above all things, my brethren. Who is the brethren he talking about? The children of Israel. Okay. My brethren, brother James, talking to his brethren, the children of Israel, saying what? Above all things, swear not. <laughs> huh? Swear not. Make no pledge, no oath, swear not. Neither by what? By heaven. Neither by the earth, neither by any other oath. Huh? In case y'all don't think that oath and swear is the same. Okay, swear not by any other oath. Huh? So we ain't supposed to be taking no oath or pledges to no flag, to no flag of our oppressors. 
uh, in the land of our captivity. That goes against the Most High. Huh? This is in the New Testament, so this ain't old. And this, you know, there's really no New or Old Testament. Huh? But that's for another subject. It says, but let your yea be yea, and your nay be nay. Lest you fall into condemnation. <laughs> Lest you fall into condemnation. Man. So there you go. That's why we shouldn't be standing and taking pledges to no flag. What them quarterbacks and all them people did, they do it because they doing what? They going, they exercising their First Amendment right to petition the government and a peaceful assembly. Huh? To peacefully protest the government and grievances. And what was the grievances even about? And how the so-called land of the free, home of the brave, where a black man can go to war like unto myself, come back home and still have to face persecution and, and racism as soon as I get here. I can serve this country and still end up shot dead in the street by one of them so-called policemen out there for exercising my First Amendment right. That's the grievance of the man was sitting there trying to talk about. Huh? But what do the white people say? Oh, well, every time a Negro stand up and, and speak his mind and exercise First Amendment right, oh, he got to be Black Lives Matter. Every Negro out here ain't no Black Lives Matter. Huh? Every Negro ain't a Black Lives Matter. Some of us get tired of seeing our brothers and sisters getting slain. Huh? Some of us get tired of that. And if you ain't tired of it, and if you ain't, if, if, if it don't affect you at all, if it don't singe your heart a little, huh, then you may need to check yourself. <laughs> you may need to check yourself. Because you don't have no, you have more compassion for those that's slaying and killing us than your own brothers and sisters. <laughs> and I see a lot of them. I ran into a lot of them too. Hmm? When they come to hear about their brothers and sisters getting slain out here, they don't want to hear nothing about it. They don't even want to talk about it. As soon as master say something. Oh, yeah, yeah, yes, sir, master. Huh? Well, there's a whole lot of house niggas out here. And I'm getting sick and tired of it. And I can say that. Why? Because it's my First Amendment right. <laughs> Exercise my freedom of speech. Whether you like it or not. Now, whether you like it or not is up to you. Hmm? I can say what I want. As long as I don't what? push my religion upon you uh, as long as I don't push my beliefs upon you. Uh, so, and therefore, no one should make you have to stand and pledge allegiance. No one should make you have to pledge allegiance to anything. Uh, no one should make you swear an oath by anything. Not even in court. No man should make you have to put your hand on the Bible Most I says, swear about nothing. <laughs> and I'm going to read this from the beginning. Because a lot of these people who... Then spoke Yeshua to the multitude and to his disciples, huh? saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. Oh, therefore, whoever he bids you observe, that diligently observe and do. But do not you after their reforms and traditions. Huh? But don't do after their what? Their reforms and their traditions. Like I told my daughter, if them people want to sit up there and, and read out another, another book, huh? what was it called? What was that book she said they had? Uh, uh, I forgot the name of it. Some crazy book. 
and then uh and they want to swear they oaths to a, a lamb like a physical lamb uh -huh. and then pledge allegiance to the flag now you let them do that crazy mess but don't you do what but do not you after their reforms and traditions uh -huh. for they say and do not <laughs> for they say they swear an oath but they don't keep it in other words uh -huh. It says, for they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be and grievous to be born, and lay them on men's shoulders. Huh? You must swear an oath to the flag. You must face forward and put your hand over your heart. You must do this and you must do that. Well, heck, if I'm free, why are you putting these burdens upon me? If I'm supposed to be free in the land of the free. Huh? Huh? If I have a right to, to my religious beliefs on the First Amendment, why are you trying to push your burdens upon me? Because <laughs> that's what it is. This, this, the society, this society tries to push their burdens and their traditions and their reforms on others who are opposed to be free. That's why I say who the most high free is free indeed. Why then go forth back into bondage? It says, for they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be born and lay them, among, lay them on the men's shoulders. But they themselves, <laughs> they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. Uh, they won't even honor these things. Uh, I see a lot of people going to stand up and salute their flag and pledge allegiance to their flag. But when hell break loose and it's time to go to war, they're the main one running. Uh, they ain't served this country not one day in their life. But they go swearing over and pledge that flag, though. Huh? It says, but all their works they do for to be seen huh, of men. They do these things to be seen at the, at the basketball uh, arenas. To be seen at the, uh, the baseball fields. Huh? Standing up pride. I love this country. Huh? Then you got these old coon Negroes sitting up there in, uh, what's that boy's name? That one black cop. Uh, I love the boys in blue. I love the black, quote, I love the uh, blue lives matter. I love my policemen. Uh, <laughs> they do all that crap to be seen. It says they make broad their philactrices. Uh, and enlarge the borders of their garments. <laughs> Just like some of them uh, Hebrew Israelites run around out there on the street corners with all them big long fringes on. Talking about they keep the whole law. Do you now? Huh? Do you now? It's because you got on gold border fringes all the way down to your thigh. Huh? Just because you run around with purple, or blue, and green ninja suits on. Do you really keep the law? <laughs> uh -huh. I ain't find one yet. I ain't seen one yet. And I talked to some men that they that 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 they, they say they more holy than me. But even they still eating pork. Uh-huh. <laughs> Come on now. So these people say they, say they keep the whole law and sin not. Shh. Hey, you you, you missing something. You doing something wrong. But anyway, it says, And love the uppermost rooms at the feast and the chief seats in the synagogues and greetings in the markets to be called the men, rabbi, rabbi. Be, but be not ye called rabbi, for one is your master. Even Hamashiach. And all of ye are brethren. Huh? We the brothers. You ain't supposed to be no rabbi. <laughs> it says, be ye not. It says, and, uh, it says, and call no man your father upon the earth. Man. Huh? But we still celebrating Father's Day, right? Huh? You don't call your dad dad, but father, right? Mm -hmm. As I say, it's always something. 
You think you, you you think you holding it down? You keep the whole law. You better you better listen to the spirit. Cause I know one thing. There ain't a day go by that the, that the spirit don't 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 correct me on some stuff, huh? That the spirit don't chastise me. Cause most I say I chastise those who I love, huh? <laughs> he bring up some stuff I done did back in the eighties, huh? Remember this? I wasn't trying to. You need to repent for him. All right, man. <laughs> Let's read on. It says, For one is your father, which is in heaven. Hallelujah. It says, Neither be ye called masters. For one is your master, even Hamashiach. But he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased. And he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. I'm going to say you better stay humble. You better stay humble. Verse 13 says, But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites. Huh? Yeshua ain't had no problem exercising his First Amendment rights. <laughs> they ain't even had First Amendment rights in these days. Huh? They had strangers trying to invade their land called the Romans. And the Pharisees and, and, and the Sadducees. Huh? So they ain't had no freedom of speech like that. But he wasn't scared back then either. Huh? He ain't shut up. It says, you hypocrites. <laughs> For you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. Huh? You hinder men's prayers. Huh? For ye neither go in yourselves, neither suffer you, you them, that are entering to go in. And what people went into the temple to do? To pray. Huh? It says, my house is a house of prayer. Huh? So he said, you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. I mean, they were keeping people from entering into the temple so they could pray. <laughs> Much like they're doing today. Huh? Just like they're doing today. Another example. My daughter go to this uh, Christian school. And uh, these people want to decide to dock her chapel grade. Hmm? They dock her chapel grade because the way she was praying. What? <laughs> uh, so I called up there. I say, because I'm thinking it was a, a Lutheran school. Because that's what it say on the outside. But this is the, the, the lady, the principal up there. Said, no, no. We, we ain't no more Lutheran. We, we, we come away from the Lutheran. But we are non-denominational. So I said, so if y'all non denominational, why the heck does this teacher, uh, this black lady who should know better above all us, huh, of our sisters, gonna tell my daughter that the way she prayed, the way she supposed to pray? <laughs> uh, gonna tell my daughter, because we pray in my house, we on our knees, we in palms up, you know, hey, I pray like this. This is how I teach my kids how to pray, huh? And this, black, and this black sister, huh, gonna tell my daughter that ain't the proper way you're supposed to pray. That ain't how you're supposed to pray. I'm like, who the heck you think you is to tell my daughter anything how to pray? You Pharisee, you hypocrite. Who I call you? Who is you? You don't even keep the law, statute, commandments. <laughs> huh? You can pray laying on your bed. You can praise him with what? Tambourines and cymbals and hi hats. Praise them with your breath. You can praise them and dance and song. I ain't gonna tell my daughter how she ought to pray. No one ain't gonna tell your children how they ought to pray. Huh? Maybe bring the law to your house, the Torah. Huh? Let's see if you in order. <laughs> but that's that's but, but that's what I'm saying. Huh? They say they uh they do what? They shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For you need to go in yourselves, need to suffer ye in that entering uh that are entering to go in. Woe to you scribes and Pharisees and hypocrites, for you devour widows' houses for a pretense making long prayer. Huh? These people, these so called Christians, man, they get on my skin sometimes. Huh? But guess what? I got to tell them the truth of the law. And once they hear it, hey, that's on them. Huh? 
they don't want to, they don't accept it, they reject it, then they got to go before the Most High with that. Huh? But don't tell my children how to pray. Huh? That's my job. I'm the head of my house. In my house, we serve the Most High Yah. And we pray to the Most High Yah the way we pray to the Most High Yah. And how you pray at your house, how you pray. Don't try to exhort your authority over a man of the house. Huh? That's in the scripture too. Don't get me started. <laughs> Don't get me started. Hey, I, I, people something else over here. Huh? But she ain't going to be there for long. Trust me. She ain't blending in for right now. But let's go. Uh, verse 14 says, Why don't you use scribes and Pharisees and hypocrites for you to devour widows' houses and for the a pretense make long prayer. Therefore, you shall receive the greater damnation. <laughs> what wants you scribes and Pharisees and hypocrites? Huh? He ain't hold back in his words. Huh? That's why I like Yeshua. Hey, he don't hold no hand. He ain't hold back nothing. It says, For ye compass sea and land to make one proselyte. Huh? Y'all y'all compass sea and land to, to convert one to be a Jew, like they do in Israel today. In other words, and when he is made, you make him twofold more the child of hell <laughs> than yourselves. Man. <laughs> you hear what he just said? <laughs> says, woe unto you, you blind guides, which say, whosoever shall swear by the temple, it is nothing. Huh? But whosoever shall swear by the gold of the temple, he is a debtor. You fools and blind. <laughs> So he called them hypocrites, fools, and blind. And all these people y'all come in to make, uh, to convert into, uh, to be a Jew, to be Jewish, huh? You make them twofold more the child of hell. <laughs> boy, you sure ain't play, boy. Oh, I like, I like, I like reading it because he, he ain't hold back his tongue, you know? Man. It says, but you fools and blind for... Whether it is greater, the gold or the temple that sacrifices the gold. <laughs> and whosoever shall swear by the altar, it is nothing. But whosoever swears by the gift that is upon it, he is guilty. You fools and blind. For whether it is greater, the gift or the altar that sacrifices the gift. <laughs> whosoever shall swear by the altar, swears by it and by all things thereon. Huh? And whosoever shall swear by the temple swears by it, and by him that dwells therein. And he that shall swear by heaven swears by the throne of Elohim, huh? and by him that sits thereon. <laughs> Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you paid tithe of mint and anise and cumin, and have omitted the weight of matters of the law, Judgment, mercy, and faith. These are you have uh these are you to have done and not to leave the other undone. Huh? So we shouldn't be swearing at all. Huh? We shouldn't be swearing at all. And I can write I can pretty much read the whole rest of this thing, but y'all can read the rest of this y'all says. <laughs> uh because it's long. Uh, Y'all can read the letter say I said that's a good read for you. So you can really understand who you who it was. He ain't play no mess. Uh, he ain't gonna be playing when he come back either. He ain't coming back as a lamb, y'all. So they, they sit there and tell you that lie they want to. He come back as a little soft colored little lamb. Uh, he say, I'm coming back as a lion of Judah. Uh I'll come back as a lion of Judah. Uh, I'm coming with a sword, a two edged sword. I'm coming to slam. Huh? He ain't coming to play. He ain't coming to play. Last but not least, go to uh Numbers, Book of Numbers. And it's gonna talk about these oaths and the power that the man of the house has, no matter what a woman that ain't even part of this house, I'm gonna try to tell you what you how you supposed to pray and how you ain't supposed to. Anybody listening to what she talking about? Huh? The man of the house has to cover the head 
And the head of the man is what? Huh? Yeshua HaMashiach. And the head of Yeshua HaMashiach is the father. Huh? So the man run this thing in the house. Not the woman. Let's read. <laughs> Numbers chapter 30. Numbers chapter 30. We're going to get into these oaths. And these pledges. And these vows. It says, And Moses spoke unto the heads of the tribes. The tribes of what? Concerning the children of Israel. So like I said before, this is dealing with the children of Israel. Not all nations. Because the rest of the nations, this word wasn't given to all nations. <laughs> he showed his word unto Jacob. He showed his, his, uh, his laws unto uh, Israel. Uh -huh. So the rest of these heathens and Gentiles want to go swear oaths and pleasures unto vanity all they want to. Hey, they got to give an account of all them swears and oaths too. Let that be upon their head and not yours. Saying, this is the thing which Yah have, has commanded. So this is commandment now. If a man vows a vow unto Yah or swear an oath to bind his soul with a bond, <laughs> he shall not break his word. He shall do according to all that proceeds out of his mouth. Huh? Now, marinate on that. Think about that when you sit up there crossing your heart and pledging, which pledge is a vow or an oath to a flag, huh? Or to any other thing, huh? Because you bind the what? His soul with the bond. Man, huh? you playing with your soul when you're doing these uh, pledges and vows now. Huh? This ain't no, this is a willy-nilly thing that you're supposed to be out to do. Huh? For I took a, I, I, I myself took a vow before the Most High, and I got to keep it. I can't dishonor this thing because the Lord says so. Hmm? And I ain't gonna tell you what it is because it's really none of your business. But just know I got to keep this thing which I had vowed unto the Most High, huh? Until He say otherwise. <laughs> huh? No matter who, how, how is anybody else feels about it, that's between me and the Father. So like I say, this word is a two-edged sword because it's cut me and you. So I got to do everything this thing says to. Now let's get back on this. Because the father, the role of the father of the house is important. The role of the dad of the house, in other words. The husband, the dad. <laughs> all right, so he says, he shall not break his word. He shall do according to all that proceeds out of his mouth. If a woman also vows a vow unto Yah and binds herself with a bond, being in her father's house in her youth, and her father hears her vow, her bond wherewith she has bound her soul, her father shall hold his peace at her. Then all her vows shall stand, and every bond wherewith she has bound her soul shall stand. Huh? So the woman, the head of the woman is what? The man. Huh? The man has what? The power to disannul or to or, or, or disallow or to um to make to make the vow stand that's over the woman. Huh? It says in her father. Here's a vow, her bond, wherewith she has bound her soul, and her father shall hold his peace of her, then all her vows shall stand, and every bond wherewith she has bound her soul shall stand. But if her father disallow her in the day that he hears, not any of her vows or of her bonds wherewith she has bound her soul shall stand, and Yah shall forgive her. So if the father disallow it and uh, disallow the vows that, that her, uh, his daughter took, you know, he's able to dis he did come on. he's able to disallow this thing. Her because uh, it says in her in the days that he hears, not any of her vows or her bonds wherewith she has bound her soul shall stand, and Yah shall forgive her. Because her father disallowed her. Okay. 
So just like with my daughter, if she going taking them pledges and, and allegiance to all this other stuff, and me being the the man, the head of the house, huh? The father in the house can disallow those things, huh? If I hear them, <laughs> if I hear them, I can disallow, huh? I say, hey, you ain't bound no vow to no flag, huh? This is not that. And if she had at all a man, okay, this daughter or this father have a man, huh? When she vowed or uttered ought not or uttered out of her lips, wherewith she bound her soul, and her man heard it, and held his peace at her in the day that he heard it, then her vow shall stand. Huh? So if her man, you know, wasn't in agreement of these vows that this that her uh the her that his uh woman made, hey, <laughs> he can disallow it too. Huh? It says, but if a man disallowed it says, but if her man disallowed her on the day that he heard it, then he shall make her vow which she vowed, and that which she uttered with her lips wherewith she bound her soul of none effect. <laughs> and Yah shall forgive her. Uh -huh. So the man of the house has power. Uh, we got power to disallow these vows and pledges. Uh, because the head of us is who? Yahushua. And the head of Yahushua is Yah. And the head of the woman is the man. Uh, now I know a lot of y'all ladies don't like to hear that, but hey, it's where it is. <laughs> That's the way it is. Huh? It says, But every vow of a widow and of her that is divorced, wherewith they have bound their souls, shall stand against her. <laughs> huh? Let me read that again. But every vow of a widow, huh? a woman who has not a husband, and of her that is divorced, who is divorced from her husband, Wherewith they have bound their souls, like in marriage, huh, shall stand against her. <laughs> it says, and if, because they what? The head is gone. Ain't nobody disallowed. Yeah. <laughs> the head is gone. Ain't nobody disallowed. And if she vowed in her man's house or bound her soul by a bond with an oath, and her man, yeah, numbers, uh, yeah, I'm in numbers. It says, and her man heard it and held his peace at her and disallowed her not. Then all her vows shall stand and every bond wherewith she bound her soul shall stand. But if her man has utterly made them void on the day he heard them, then whatsoever proceeded out of her lips concerning her vows or concerning the bond of her soul shall not stand. Her man has made them void, and Yah shall forgive her. Every vow and every, bind, and every binding oath to afflict the soul, her man may establish it, or her man may make, may make it void. Huh? So the man can establish it or make it void. That's important to get that. But if her man altogether hold his peace at her from day to day, then he establishes, establishes all her vows or all her bonds which are upon her. He confirms them because he held his peace at her in the day that he heard them. But if he shall in any ways make them void after that he has heard them, uh, so he done prolonged, he done heard this day to day and all this going on, and he ain't said nothing then. And then come back later and do what? <laughs> After he got tired of hearing about it, or tired of this bow, okay? Then he shall, be, it says, but if he shall in any ways make them void after that he has heard them, then he shall, fear, he shall bear her iniquity. He shall bear her sin. These are the statutes which Yah commanded Moses between the man and his woman, between the father and his daughter, 
being yet in her youth in her father's house. Okay. So you men, y'all can y'all can be able to disallow or establish these vows concerning your your daughters and your woman. Huh? But like he said at the beginning, <laughs> if a man vows a vow unto Yah or swears an oath to bind his soul with the bond, and he shall not break his word. <laughs> He shall do according that all the proceeds out of his mouth. So ain't nobody to disannow his stuff. Huh? But he can disannow the woman's and the, and the, and the daughter. Huh? But your stuff, hey, ain't nobody to disannow you. <laughs> Once you make that pledge, hey, you better keep your word. Your word is your bond. <laughs> so y'all be careful out there pledging these allegiances and stuff that you don't really care for. Because huh? you got to honor that oath. Cause ain't no, the woman can't disannul your oath. <laughs> the woman can't disannul or or, or, or or disallow or establish your oath. That's why he went. That's why uh, Paul was talking about and who the head and who who ain't. And uh, go with me to First Corinthians, chapter eleven. First Corinthians, chapter eleven, verse one, and this is gonna be it. It says, be ye followers of me, even as, even as I also am of Hamashiach. Now I praise you, brethren, that you remember me in all things and keep the ordinances as I delivered them to you. But I would have you to know that the head of every man is the Hamashiach, huh? the Messiah. And the head of the woman is the man. And the head of the Messiah, or Hamashiach, is Yah. <laughs> uh -huh. Verse 7 says For a man indeed ought to not cover his head For as much as he uh, Well I'm going to read the whole thing Verse 4 it says Every man praying and prophesying Having his head covered Dishonor his head But every woman that prays and prophesies With her head uncovered dis Dishonors her head For that it is even all For it is even all One as if she were shaven. Okay. For if the if the woman were not covered, let her also be shorn. But if it be a shame for a woman to be shorn or shaven, let her be covered. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head for as much as he is the image and the glory of Yah, but the woman is the glory of the man. Okay. For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. For this cause ought for this cause ought the woman to have power on her head because of the angels. Uh, neither let nevertheless, neither is the man without the woman, neither the woman without the man. In in Yah. For as for as the woman is of the man, even so is the man also by the woman. But all things of, El of, of Elohim, judging yourselves, is it comely that a woman pray unto Elohim uncovered? Does not even nature itself teach you that if a man have long hair, it is a shame unto him? But if a woman have long hair, it is a glory to her, for her hair is given her for a covering. But this is the catch, okay? <laughs> No, nah. no, nah. this is the, this is the catcher. See, you got to read verse 16. It says, but if any man seem to be contentious, we have no such custom. No such custom of what? Uh, concerning, concerning the covering and uncovering of the head, of the hair itself, the carnal things. Uh, so when he talking about it, uh, the man and the woman covering the head We're talking about spiritual We're talking about the man ought to cover His head which his head is The Hamashiach uh, And the woman cover her head Which is the man uh, and Nothing to do with Covering your head with scarves And hats and all this thing Because he said but if any man Seem to be contentious we have no such custom Neither the called out assembly Or the churches of Yah hmm?
So, that's it. That's all I got for you today. Uh huh? So, cover your head. Not literally, but spiritually. Huh? Spiritually, cover your head. Everything ain't carnal all the time. You know? But I know some people when they oh, well, you got to. You know, you gotta have a little, little hat on your head, and woman gotta have a veil like the Muslims and all that stuff. But that way, he just said you don't have no such customs. <laughs> you know, you don't have no such customs as, as those. You know? He talking about covering your head spiritually, because what he was getting ready to do was what communion. Huh? He getting ready to do communion. They won't go into a fashion show. He getting ready to do communion. <laughs> And what she told you what? To examine yourselves. Uh, if you examine yourselves, you shall not be what? Condemned with the world. So examine yourselves. What it said, yeah. Examine yourselves. But with that, brothers and sisters, you know, be careful, y'all, making these pledges and oaths now. You got a First Amendment right exercise. That's why a lot of brothers and sisters went out to fight in battle and war. For we can, uh, you know, so you could exercise your First Amendment rights and the freedoms and liberties that's supposed to be for all. Huh? You know, so next time you had, you know, at some place or whatever and everybody want to stand up salute and all that, that is your First Amendment right. You ain't got to do that. Huh? Because that goes against your beliefs. It goes against the word. Huh? So, but I hope y'all have a blessed day. Be careful out there, y'all, and the, uh, with the storm and all that stuff going on. And uh, hey, pray against them storms. <laughs> ain't no harm with that. Tell the tempest to calm down. Cease that rain from your house. Huh? We gotta start exercising our power in y'all. Huh? Start praying the right prayers towards y'all, so he can do things for us. But I hope y'all have a blessed day. Shalom.